This is a video for the heat fix on 2011 through 2015 Volt. It will document work on our 2013 Volt and I hope it might be valuable to others who aren't sure if they can fix it themselves. Quick overview of the fix. Expect it to take a couple of hours if you do it on your own. You're going to pull the front passenger side wheel, front black splash guard under the car, hose clamps, remove a wire connector, nuts, and the bad pump, then do all that in reverse with the new pump, then top off fluids. Symptoms. We first noticed that something was getting really loud and vibrating when we were running the HVAC, to the point where it almost sounded like the engine was running when we had it on. Anyway, finally the noise stopped and so did the heat one day. I'm guessing not everyone will have this symptom, but it might help in diagnosing the problem or give you warning that your heat is about to stop working. Note that this is actually the second time the part has been replaced. The first time was under the certified warranty, and that time there was no symptoms other than the heater blowing extremely cold air. Part to buy. You will need to buy the GM heater coolant pump, part number 1359789. This is basically a maintenance item on the bolt, unfortunately. This is a 2015 redesign and is an exact drop-in replacement that works on all the Gen 1 cars. I will put a link down in of the part down in the description. Here's a list of the tools required, and you might want to have all of these before you start. T15 Torx screwdriver, 7mm socket or wrench, 8mm socket or wrench, 10mm socket or wrench, flat blade screwdriver, flashlight, half inch breaker bar, three quarter inch socket, small pliers, needle nose, large vice grips, a low profile car jack, a jack stand, wheel chalk, Dex Cool 5050, and a knife. Now onto the repair procedure. You want to chalk one or both of the rear tires, then break loose the lugs on the front passenger's tire. Carefully position the low profile jack under the frame rail as shown, otherwise you may damage the underside of the car. Insert the jack stand and remove the lugs from the wheel. Take off the whole wheel and set it aside. Now you want to remove the T15 Torx fasteners on the black splash guard under the front passenger side of the car. Then using a combination of flat blade screwdriver and a small needle nose pliers, remove the centers of the push pin fasteners. It's also helpful to remove the most forward push pin fastener on the rear splash guard. Move to the bottom of the black splash guard and remove the 7mm bolts in the spoiler area and the 8mm bolts in the center area. Make sure to keep them separate so you don't mix them up later. Once all the fasteners are out you can remove the black splash guard. Note the retention nubs where the two guards meet. You may need the flat blade screwdriver to gently pry them apart. Once the black splash guard is removed you have access to the pump. Put a drip pan under the pump, remove the two hoses first by removing the clamps and wiggling the hoses loose. Remove the plastic electric stay on the bottom bolt, then remove the electrical connector by being careful to flip the white release lever up first. Then take the two mounting nuts and the clamp off. Now the pump itself can be removed. Now you want to just do everything you just did in reverse and put it all back together. Once you get the car back level, open up the hood and top it off with 50-50 Dexcool coolant. While you're under the hood, you might want to check all the other fluid levels and top them off as needed. Hopefully that helps a few people out who are thinking about doing that themselves.